Life is so simple, it's just beautiful. I like to wake up early, I like to go for a morning walk to come to myself and enjoy the nature. I love the sun rays, especially in summertime. You also reflect life a little as well. So far, I've lived in six different countries or territory. Know your roots, where you come from, this part of you is pretty important. Whatever you go around the world, be kind to people, we can all do better. Now, I'm gonna tell you 13 facts about me. Hello, life update from Henry. How's everyone doing? So today's video, I'm gonna share with you 13 questions about me. I basically posted that on the social media platform last night to ask some friends, acquaintances, or followers on Instagram, and also some really close friends on WhatsApp. So now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about me. Stay tuned. So the first question, What's your idea of home? So this question came from a friend of mine from Singapore and he's just like a well-read and like a wordsmith and really really crafty in terms of literature. So he asked me this question. I will answer this question in two forms. One is internally and the other one is externally. So internally is something that, you know, I want to feel like I have the good vibes in where I live and that specific energy we call it qi in Chinese. It has to be harmonious. It feels comfortable and I am allowed to spend some quality time with myself without much worries. Externally, it doesn't really matter where I am around the world, but if I'm in some place that obviously will be close to the family or friends, like Singapore and Taiwan or even Germany with some really, really good friends. So as long as I have my space and I feel like it's comfortable, a place wherever I can relax. And it would be a luxury if I do have my own bed, I can sleep on my own bed, that's a luxury, but I don't necessarily need that when I'm traveling. Second question is from a mate of mine from my CrossFit here in Germany. So she asked the question in German. She asked, wie sieht ein perfekter Tag für dich für dich aus? So how does a perfect day look like for you? For me, it's very simple. I like to wake up early. I like to go for a morning walk in a park to come to myself and enjoy the nature, walk towards CrossFit, have a CrossFit session with the mates there, which I really, really enjoy, and also do a yoga session to cool everything down, you know, come back to myself. And afterwards, I just want to come home, you know, do things slowly, have a cafe und Kuchen vielleicht. At night, in evening time, I would like to share a meal with good friends and family members, preferably Italian or Chinese. Food. I love them so much. The third question is actually from a colleague of mine in Instagram. I have not met her in, in real life yet. She's German but based in Hong Kong. She asks, Wie lange wohnst du schon in Deutschland? How long have you been living in Germany? The answer is since uh, 2011, so almost 10 years, you know. So a friend of mine from Taiwan, who I used to live with in Australia, in Sydney, all question, he said, how old are you? Well, I am... I'm gorgeous. <laughs> What's your favorite color? My favorite colors are blue and orange. So when I meditate, these are the two colors that come to me first. Probably also associated with the sky, with the blue sky or the sun. Sunset and sunrise. Just I love the sun rays. Beautiful, especially in summertime. What's your lucky number? Four. Do you enjoy big or small cocks? Hmm. Well, I don't eat animals. I love animals, so I will enjoy and love both big and small cocks if I answer your questions. So what do you like then? Go figure. <laughs> what have you learned from living in so many different places? Following questions actually from Angus, one of the guy who worked with Ali from Part-Time YouTuber Academy. So I kind of posted the question to him this morning and he gave me like a series of questions that I could think about it. So I decided to put them into this video so you can get to know more about me. So far, I've lived in six different countries or territory and I'll just give a very short answer to each and every one of them to get out the essence of that you know so Taiwan is basically where I was born and bred in that place I would say to know your roots where you come from this part of you is pretty important because whatever you go around the world people always ask you that questions you know second place is Singapore I grew up there so I spent my early teenage years there to go through school so I had lots of friends there what I learned about Singapore which I learned to appreciate after I live in other countries are the following diversity summertime and the food obviously and the third place is Australia so I spent about three years in Australia for my bachelor studies one year in Perth and two years in Sydney I think Australia is a very interesting place for me because I had a great time there at the same time also really really down moment it took me some time to process the whole thing so I'll just summarize in two words what no worries culture is all about 
and what racism mean. Liechtenstein, so this is a tiny little country where I did my first master program. I would say enjoy the simplicity and the nature. London, I kind of worked in London for two years, a few years ago. What I learned about London is the hustle culture and also there are beauties in every single one of us because we're all unique. Everyone's from different backgrounds, different walks of life and you just got to be patient with them. The last one is Germany. So I've been here for 10 years. So to some extent, it structured my life, you know, like my early adulthood. My study, my work, my internships, I fell in love, I fell off love, I live here, I make friends here, I cry, I laugh. There's so many things, you know. I'll say it's always like a love and hate relationship, but Germany has always been there in my heart through the years. And what I learned from Germany is that the punctuality, precision in your thoughts, in your speech, and the way you present yourself. Don't be afraid to form your own opinions and present them to others and just, you know, have an argument with them. It is okay. And the directness. Sometimes I find the directness is good, especially in the business context. But personally, I probably will not use that. So these are the four things I learned from Germany. What got you interested in languages? I find languages very fascinating and beautiful. I'm interested in language because I'm able to speak to the people in their own language, which I find really, really fascinating. I understand their mentality through first-hand information exchange and read the books and the literature in their culture, in their countries. For instance, in Germany, uh, it's been called as Das Land der Dichter und Denker, the land of the poets and the thinkers, which I find really, really beautiful. And recently, I started to get into more of the German books and reading them in German. So some of them obviously are very, very difficult, which I'm not there yet. I just find it fantastic because it presents you different ideology and different ways of thinking, you know, how the German thinks. So that's why I say the mentality is good because through a language, you understand why, the whys they think about things like that. The next question is, how many languages do you ultimately want to speak? Altogether, only five in this life, I would say. And when I say five, I don't want to speak these five languages, just, you know, hello, how it's going, like greetings format, but more fluently in depth. So I speak three languages fluently, Mandarin, Chinese, and English, they're both my mother tongue, so to say. And German, I started to learn it when I was in my early 20s. So I've got 10 years under my belt. I'm taking classes in Spanish, but it's just more like a very relaxed way because one day I really would like to go to South America to do more tracking there. I just find Spanish is such a sexy language in my opinion, you know, like the dance, the move, the passion that people show. So that's why I would like to be fluent in Spanish one day. And then last one, the fifth one is Japanese. I took two semesters of Japanese language in my bachelor studies time. I really enjoyed it so much. It reminded so much of my childhood in Taiwan, of my grandfather who passed away many, many years ago. You know, certain things that he always did it with us to all the grandkids when we were younger. And then I really like the Japanese culture a lot. It's a great place to bring your parents there. The mountains, the nature, and the efficiency just on another level. So those are five languages I would like to speak uh, fluently in this life. I do three already, so I'm working on the other two. I think language is something that it's like a lifelong learning project. It's constantly learning. Even for German, I'm taking classes every single day just to be a bit more flexible. Like I can present myself and play the language a bit more, you know, fun. So why do you think people should try to learn another language? I think learning a language is a fantastic thing to do, you know, because you break down the misunderstanding, the assumptions that people have with each other, especially people coming from different cultural backgrounds, speaking different languages, and you comprehend the mentality of the people, the whys, as I mentioned before, why do they think in a certain way, why do they do things in certain ways, you know, and then bridge the differences and promote more understanding among each other. That's very important. And also improve your memory. I'm not a scientist, but some of the journals that I read through newspaper, they were saying, you know, when you learn a new language, it helps to reduce the effect that you have Alzheimer. I don't know that it's true, but I know that when I'm learning new vocabularies or grammatical points or sentence structures, it does require a lot of memory work, you know, to get yourself used to those sentence structure. When I get to that stage, I'll let you know. What's your favorite word in every language you speak? So I'll just say in German, English, Chinese, and Spanish, this four, yeah. German, I like the word, the modal particle, they call it, it's called doch. So this little word is very unique in German language because it doesn't really exist in English or Chinese. It means that someone who is saying something, something to you, but you don't necessarily agree, you can't say doch, you know, it's like the opposite, opposite of what the person is saying to you. Yeah, if you're interested in this more explanation, click through other videos of mine whereby I explain and share my learning experiences of German language so you can get to know more about this doch 
B-O-C-H. In English, it's called be kind. I love the word kind because I think that's the sexiest word ever. Don't you want to be kind to people? Why do we have to be nasty to people? You know, we, we can all do better. And kind, interestingly, this word in German is called Kind is pronounced as Kind. That's Kind. That's Kind in German means a child. So be kind, like bring out of your that innocence. Remind yourself that innocence. When you're a little kid, you know, you go to every other kid, you kind of just make friends with them. And that's that's how we should be, you know, be nice to people. In Chinese, I like these two words, Si Xiang. It kind of means to think and then your thoughts. Because when you think and thought, when you look at the Chinese character properly, below that, the bottom part, they have the heart sign. So not only do we think logically in you know, today's society, like people can't promote that, but we also don't forget to think through our hearts because you have to listen to that. And when you do things, it becomes easier and you find your way in this short life. Spanish, I love that word, vamos, <laughs> vamos a la playa. I'm sure everyone heard that before. Describe like, to go, you know, let's go. It kind of describes life in a sense that we're always constantly on the move. If you fall, pick yourself up and keep going. At some point, you'll get to your destination. You'll achieve what you aim for initially. So those are the four words I love in that respective languages. So the last question, oh, we're coming to the end. What interests you outside of learning languages? I love these three things. One is a long distance trekking. So for instance, like a pilgrimage route in Spain, I have done it four times to Santiago de Compostela since 2011. I just find Spain is such a beautiful country. The people, the landscape, and that long winding road leading up to Santiago de Compostela is just amazing. Like you spend so much time having that conversation with yourself while in beautiful nature. I highly recommend everyone to do that. It is life-changing. Like, you know, how often do you have that time to so spend it with yourself? The second one is the big outdoor and the big nature. I love hiking in summer, like in the Alps, in Japan or in Taiwan, we have lots of mountains that's about 3,000 meters. So it's really, really beautiful. Hopefully one day I can go to Patagonia in South America. I really would love to see those mountain range, you know, to experience the local culture as well. I love to do surfing in summer as well. It's just beautiful. Life is so simple. You have your surfing boards, the water and yourself you know, and just go with the wave. You also reflect life a little as well. Like you don't necessarily need a lot, but those simple moments, how you maneuver yourself, it kind of describes the ups and downs too. Skiing in winter time. I love the agiling rush, you know, coming down from a slope. It sometimes can be challenging. There's lots of hurdles, but I love the landscape, you know, skiing from Switzerland to Italy, just one of my favorites. Yeah, that freedom is indescribable. It's just something you, you ought to do it. And the last one is spending time with my good friends, like spending quality time with them and also my families. You know, especially during COVID time the last two years, how often do you really see your family and some really good friends? So try to make time if you can. And also based on the rules that are recommended, try to spend a bit more time with them to the best of your ability. So people, that's 13 facts about me. I hope you have learned something about me. Yeah? If you see me sometime during one of those video or in real life, in person come on and say hi i will definitely say hi back so whatever you are i hope you're having a great day be kind to yourself don't forget to smile and keep being each other company and taking care of each other i'll keep you updated hasta luego ciao ciao